This is the It's Gonna Be Okay podcast with Dr. Roseanne, and I'm Dr. Roseanne, and today we're talking about homework tips for parents. If you didn't listen to my previous episode about why homework struggles happen, please do, because I want you to start thinking about it. Remember, we never want to personalize behavior and blame kids. We want to put our detective hat on and start thinking about why my child is struggling, right? So when we're talking about these homework tips, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorites because (laughs) for 30 years I've been talking about homework tips. Um, And I use these myself and they're good. And we really need to start thinking about it, you know? And, And before you start thinking about, you know, homework tips, you know, yeah, if your kid has an organic issue, which most of, you know, the families listening here have at least one child with a divergent brain. I have two. Um, You know, I always want to work on calming their brain. And I start with, you know, or I should say end their day with by giving them magnesium and neurotastic multi-mag brain formula. You can go to drrosanne.com forward slash magnesium. I couldn't be prouder of it. I have spent years developing it based on what I know to regulate the brain and improve attention and comment. And that's the forms of magnesium that is in this multi-mag brain formula, multiple forms. Um, And it's designed to be tasty and easy to use and not just your child can use it, but the whole family can. So it's the first of its kind designed by a mental health professional for mental health of child and family. We are the first company to be a mental wellness brand for a child. And so I'm really excited about it and there's more to come. So let's talk about my top homework tips for parents. Number one, logical, but not. We want to set up our environment, right? So of course we think about, you know, the paper, the pens, the the notepads, but we're not really thinking about the environment, right? In like, where is it? Does it have sensory components? Does it have the right kind of noise your child needs? Like, what does that environment have? Is it a regular place, right? It shouldn't be on their bed. No. Um, It shouldn't be in a noisy place. I know a lot of kids, Mike, you know, actually my kid prefers to do his homework on the dining room table. Um, It actually is pretty quiet there. Um, And he likes to have access to me. So we kind of talk about it. You know, sometimes he does it in his room, but I feel like he gets, um, he's not a distractible kid, my younger one, but I feel like he does get distracted there. So everyone's a little different where his brother prefers to do it in his room. So test it out, look at your environment, set it up, be consistent, right? Instruction support. What does your kid need, right? Does your kid need for you to, you know, come home and say, let's review what homework you do actually have. You know, a lot of kids will say, I checked the Google Classroom. You know, Google Classrooms are not always up to date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in my schmancy school, sometimes it's not up to date. Um, And so we've had incidences where we haven't gotten, you know, the correct assignment. So now JC loves to email me during the day when there's like a test or something like that. Um, and that was him. I didn't ask him to do it. He just started doing it. Um, and his teacher was like, well, he doesn't have to do that. And I was like, well, he wants to do that. And he actually wants to get on my schedule cause I'm really busy and he wants to make sure he's able to, you know, get enough time with me. Um, because he knows if I had planned something else, how can I, you know, just like cancel a client appointment? And she was like, oh, I'm like, yeah, we're busy people. That's what most families are like. So advance notice is good, knowing what kind of support he or she need instructions repeated. Um, do they need to be, you know, um, uh, saying things out loud? Like what kind of instructional support do they need? Most kids with homework challenges really struggle with the directions. So they might misunderstand the directions. They might rush through them. There might be a lot of things. So that I find just setting up the directions and then having a constancy in how they're approached. So like when we do writing assignments, I know that my dyslexic Giancarlo, I make him do a mind map. I don't care what he's doing. He'll he'll be like, I got it. I'm like, no, you don't. So just, you know, what's a mind map? Just Google mind map, a circle with little 
um, lines coming through it going to other circles. And you can use that as sort of a main idea with subpoints. You can categorize information in any way, shape, or form. And for kids with learning and processing issues, they are almost exclusively visual and kinesthetic learners. Very rare that they're an auditory learner. So repeating things isn't going to help. Just make it visual. Um, so making sure you have that. Okay, my brain hacks. So when I have kids with homework problems, a lot of times they're brain they're tired, they're they're overly stressed, and they don't have much to give by the time they sit down and go do the homework. I remember, you know, when I was first starting out, I had this lovely kid. Oh my God, he's a man now. And, you know, he was spending in middle school like four hours a day doing his homework. And I was like, what is going on? And there was a lot going on. It turned out he had a learning disability and this had been going on a long time. They didn't even really tell the school. And he, um, uh, what we did is we did a lot of brain hacks in terms of stimulating and obviously putting in the right instructional support at school and at home. But let's talk about brain hacks. So number one, what does your kid need when they get home? I don't care how old they are. Do they need to move? Do they need a break? You shouldn't be getting on video game time. Your brain's going to get more tired. Once you're on a device for more than 20 minutes, your brain will get either overstimulated or understimulated. 20 minutes. That's as little time as it takes for that to happen. So I like for kids to have a snack. I like for them, I don't care if it's just some stretching. I don't care if you're like just going to lay down a minute. Whatever you're going to do, you got to switch gears. You got to switch it up. Some kids like to just get it done. Um, you got to let them lead. But even when that's the case, you want to give them the right kinds of, of support for their brain. So things that stimulate the brain and keep it focused, seltzers, right? Bubbly water, carbonated water, not soda, people. Um, sugar is, is not a brain food, will help the brain to stay focused. That's a great one. Chewy things like... Um, uh, fruit leather, natural fruit leather, or beef jerky, crunchy things, nuts. These are things that create stimulation uh, while you are learning, right? And as I already said, movement is a great way to get oxygen to the frontal lobes. Now, it'd be great if they went and walked a pet, um, they did a little walk with you, they did a sport, whatever it is. But sometimes, you know, you're living in an apartment, so you could do brain gym activities. You can do different types of activities that help you. Anytime you cross the midline, so if you're watching, you can see me if you're listening. So the midline is an imaginary line that goes from the top of your head, you know, um, down your nose all, all the way down. So if you take your right hand and touch your left shoulder, that's crossing a midline. Any activity where you're crossing that line creates um, – uh, gets that oxygen going to the frontal lobes. It's going to create a lot of stimulation. So you, there are a series of activities that can be done at home. You don't need to go to those brain gym places. Um, you can just do these activities at home. Google it, right? Okay. So, and and sometimes they need sensory activities. Sometimes you could do a mini trampoline. You can do dancing. Whatever it is, just getting it in and making there some consistency, structure, and routine. Setting up that environment is also what's that structure and routine. Okay. Monitoring, communication, positive reinforcement. So when you have a kid who struggles, you can't just be like, go to your room and get your homework done. You have to monitor, right? If we have a kid with a known learning issue or attention problem, it's it's they're going to need some level of, of monitoring. It doesn't mean you're all over them. And obviously, we want to do structuring as much as we can. You know, what's your checklist? Okay. You know, do you have your assignment book? Okay. You know, um, have you read your instructions? No. Okay, we'll go and read your instructions. And when you're ready to repeat them back to me, let me know. V that is a different kind of interaction. And our kids may need more support, right? And if you find yourself re-explaining, like it's the first time they've heard this stuff and it's happening all the time, they're not getting proper instruction at school, communicate with your teacher, ask for an IEP meeting, whatever it is. And clearly, if they're struggling that much with understanding, a 504 ain't cutting it. You might need an IEP. Um, communication with your child 
and the school. Really critical. Don't just let things happen at home and not talk to the teacher. And also don't put everything that's happening home on school, right? So if your kid's angry and irritated or um, you're really not able to get the homework done because you're not doing some of these things, right? Or you're unwilling and you feel that the school, it's their responsibility. It's not. Now, there are things that where it gets a gray area, but you've got to try to structure your environment. You have to help reinforce them and reward them. That's important. So positive reinforcement. So when you see your child making positive steps towards doing their homework, you want to reinforce it, right? So it doesn't mean the completed project, you know, they they come up with an idea that maybe it's a little off. You can say, wow, I really love this, this, and this, that idea. But what do you think? The teacher asked you to do X, Y, and Z. What do you think we should do? Like start getting them critical thinking. You want to reinforce, open up the door. Don't just tell them that they're, they're wrong, right? Um, for sure. Um, let's talk about some long game parent tips. <laughs> so, um, you know, being great at homework, and being consistent with it isn't just going to happen. So we talked a lot about different types of tips. So one, we a long game tip is making your kid be in, getting them independent and managing. If they haven't caught on and there's been some kind of blockage, really one, why is it happening? That is a long game tip of figuring that out and then putting these things into place and being constant with it, right? So having consistency and reinforcement and then asking your kids questions instead of telling them all the time. That is a long game tip because we want to rescue. We want to give them the answer, right? We want to make sure. We want our kids, we want to help them to, you know, understand the requirements of the task. We want them to actually attempt it, right? Even if it's terrible, um, and sometimes kids turn things in and you're like, Ooh, you know, let them, let them handle it. Let them figure it out. Okay. Well, next time you can do X, Y, and Z. So we want to make sure that our kids feel good about their homework, but we also want them to understand what homework is and how it helps them. Right. So instead of saying, well, you need your homework to get a good grade, you say, well, why do you think you're doing the homework? It's practice. It's going to help you in your history. It's going to help you in your math. Nobody loves homework, but it's something we all do. We want to normalize it and have good conversations about it. Um, and that is how we help our kids to do better. When your kid is stuck, when you're doing those constant re-explainings, or really it's just you feel that you're an impasse, you've got to talk to school if it's leading to a lot of emotional frustration and you feel like you've talked to the school, you've done all those things, then you probably need therapist support. Sometimes mundane tasks is where our drama plays out with our kids. So I hope this was a good enlightening conversation and gave you a jumping point to start to look at what's going on and then implement some of these behaviors and then, you know, just being consistent. Homework doesn't have to be a battle when you get to some of these underlying issues and use the right strategies.